Blue 42 said, hey, let's jump in the NCAA Conference Championship Week. And we're going to start off Friday night, Pac-12 Championship. The last year, the Pac-12, before both these teams moved to the Big Ten, it's the number five playoff on Oregon Ducks, number three Washington Huskies. For what really comes down to a spot in the playoffs, uh, the rematch, Washington barely edged out Oregon in uh, Seattle earlier this year. Can Oregon get revenge? Despite the loss, Oregon comes in nine and a half point favorites over Washington. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, but I, I get it. They've I, been playing a lot better than Washington since that game, really. Yeah, I was gonna, I've was i been trying to find the word, and I just realized the word I was trying to tell you about what happened to Michael Penix last week. He got exposed. That was what I was trying to say. Not that he's he did anything inherently bad, but that they can't move the ball through the air to against an inferior team proved to me it was rivalry week, so you can kind of throw you know Washington Washington State's usually a close game no matter how good the teams are. Two hundred and four passing yards with one touchdown. But hey, they keep winning and they haven't lost yet. I think this is the time Oregon Ducks wins the game. I agree with you. I think Oregon's the hotter team. They're the team that, if you watch them, if you Look, put on and, the tape and watch them play football, you're like, that's a good fucking team. Right, and not, I think and they not have to the say momentum. anything. Despite Washington being 12 and 0, it's crazy to say. Right, and, and I know I'm saying not necessarily bad things about Michael Penix, but not saying, like, whoa, he's going to win. Bo Nix has done very well this season protecting I mean, the ball. Between Bo Nix and Jaden Daniels, pretty much for the number Heisman. Number one offense for in the Heisman. And number one offense in. in in, college, in football. college football, I think the Ducks' defense holds up and they win the game. I think if Michael Penix throws more than two touchdowns, I think Washington wins the game. I think Oregon gets this dub outright, but I'm not sure if they cover the nine and a half. Uh, that nine and a half is scary, and I, I'm At not a, a huge site, fan of the sixty-six and a half point spread or the sixty-six and a half point over under either. Yeah, because Washington lately has been a low uh, under scoring, scoring team. team. And th- I think in this type of matchup, similar to rivalry week, I think the Ducks are going to play to the I mean, competition. They're two rivals, too, yeah. So I agree the Ducks are going to win. I'm kind of feeling like an under and Washington covering. So we're both on Oregon right there. Let's move on to the first big game of Saturday. I think this is at 11 a.m. It's the Big 12 championship game. It's the last year Texas in the Big 12 before they jumped to the SEC. And this number seven ranked Texas Longhorns taking on number 18, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has been one of the most roller coaster teams. They have big leads. They blow big leads. They're down by a lot. They come back. They beat teams they're not supposed to beat. They lose to teams they're not supposed to lose to. Oklahoma State's a complete wild card in this game. Texas, one of the most impressive resumes in college football. There's a good chance that they win this game and we're Big 12 champs. They get in the playoffs. Did I read that correctly when Texas hasn't been conference champs since 2009? That is correct. So they'll get it right before they go somewhere else? And then they'll jump into the SEC, Oh, and they'll never win in the SEC. Oh, we say that, but there's a chance. That Texas brand, it's the biggest brand in college football. Jump into the SEC, the biggest. Oh, kind of gets recruiting. They get It'll recruiting help. power a lot. Um, okay, fair. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. Texas, fourteen and a half point favorites. I think, I think it's going to be closer than that. I do have the Longhorns though. I think. I think they're the hotter team. They had the one stumble against Oklahoma, but that's a rivalry uh, in the middle of the season. Like, so you can, those teams just play each other different. Right. Uh, Texas, I mean. Texas player has been playing good. They beat Ollie the shit Gordon, out of Texas Tech last week. Ollie Gordon, he's like the third ranked running back in the nation. Going up against Texas's defense, they haven't allowed more than like 85 yards per game to running backs. So if all that plays, and look, we're it's not like we're week three into the season. We're at conference championship week. I think those stats matter. We know matter. what these teams are. Right. Yeah. I th- that's why I'm saying it kind of like that. I think those stats matter. I think Texas has shown all season that they're going to stop the run, which is the Cowboys' biggest, you know, kind of avenue to themselves. I think the Longhorns are going to win. I agree with you. I don't know about that 14.5 point spread, but I agree that minus 700 money line is going to hit this Saturday. All right, so let's move on to the SEC title game. I think this is the. Is this the well, biggest the- one? I wouldn't say the biggest. I think biggest brand-wise, this year may not be the biggest. 
because I think Oregon Washington just three versus five because those are guaranteed winner that goes to the playoffs. But Georgia Alabama these teams have been the two best teams besides LSU every once in a while the past like two three years. Georgia Alabama have been the two most consistent teams in the SEC. Georgia the two time defending champ obviously. Georgia Come- has won twenty nine games straight. Yeah, coming undefeated. Nuts. Two straight titles. And they're taking on Alabama, who say what you want about the Crimson Tide. They're figuring out ways to win. They should have lost last week to Auburn. Lucky to get the dub. But they, a fourth and goal from the 31. I was going to say fourth and 31. With like, with like a minute left in they score. I mean, that was just an all-time Auburn blow in that game. Oh, God. Uh, but look, but because Bulldogs- of that, Bama still has a chance that they beat Georgia. It could very well be a top four playoff team. Yeah, absolutely. That would be a, a huge upset. Even though the odds don't say it, it's a plus one eighty money line for the but Alabama. Just you the respect time. Alabama and Nick Saban get in any kind of and championship they game. It. Yeah, I mean, because for the past fifteen years they've been the standard in college football. Georgia obviously has won two titles the past two years, but but before that, when it's been Alabama, right? So Alabama's good. The offense has been very shaky all year. The defense has allowed points that they typically don't in a you know, historic Nick Saban season. But going along with that, Georgia has been the same kind of team. I think Georgia plays with their opponent, too. When they play teams right. that aren't that good, they're going to beat them, but, but just by a little bit. When they play a team like Alabama, they're going to come out probably one of their best games of the year. I think Georgia rolls in this. Six-point favorites? I believe that's going to happen. I think the Bulldogs win by about 10. Right. I think we're going to get six-point favorites. The Bulldogs are top 10 in most categories on offense and on defense. I think they're going to do well enough what it takes to beat Nick Saban and continue their unbeaten streak. I think they're on their way to another, probably a third straight title. I believe that's accurate as well. That's probably a future I should place in the coming weeks. All right, so let's move on to now the Big Ten Championship game. The number two Michigan Wolverines coming off probably the biggest win of the season in all of college football by beating Ohio State. What's happening with the Big Ten next year? Big Ten's just adding teams. So they're okay. adding Oregon and Washington, actually. So Okay, so I, that's good. I watched. Big Ten's going to get stronger. Good, I like that. Okay, They're taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes, 10-2. and two. This may be the worst 10 and 2 offense I've ever seen in my life. They're this averaging team, 204 yards of offense per game. They're barely scoring points. Their defense is so good, they're winning games. It's crazy. Uh, I think a one sided team like this is like a UFC fighter that can only wrestle and can't strike or vice versa. And they're taking on a well rounded guy. I think Michigan, they have better talent. They're more well rounded. Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game is going to roll over Iowa. 23-point favorites. But listen to this stat. But to beat them by 23 points, they only had to score like 31 points. Right. Iowa's defense is a top 10 defense across the league all year. Okay? They've only allowed 12 points per game, which is nuts. It's crazy. And they only allow four yards per play. It's legitimately one of the best defenses in the country, if not the best. But to say that they're, you know, 23 and a half point dog, they I don't still even believe let up 23 points in a game. Right. That just tells you what Vegas is thinking. Yeah, it's like, oh man, this is going to be bad. I mean, you have a money line of minus 25. Michigan might score 24 points and cover and just be it done. It could be 24 0. Yeah. Like, and that would be a hard fought game for Iowa. Exactly. So I think Michigan's going to win. I think the only way that the Hawkeyes win is that they play absolutely perfect. And they got to score like twice on defense. Right. It's got to be like touchdown. one pick six and a fumble recovery for like a, a touchdown. Or something. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just got to be some crazy stuff to happen. And the defense has to do what they've been, you know, putting together all season. So we agree on the first four games. I think we disagree on this one though. The ACC championship gave the undefeated Florida state Seminoles, Look, I got to go with our hometown hero, Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman. And they're taking on Louisville Cardinals, 10-2. Louisville having a dream season until last week they lost to their (laughs) in-state arch rival, Kentucky, who's not even having a good season. Right. It's like a slap in the face when you lose, when you're the better team and you just get beat. It was an SEC-ACC game, so non-conference, but it's a tough way to go into championship week. But they're taking on a Florida State team who, since I know it's been— one and a half games, one and three quarter games since Jordan Travis got hurt. 
but their offense is not the same. Dude, Tate Them Rodenmaker against, got absolutely demolished last week with I a targeting I thought they were about hit. to lose the, Flo- the Florida Gators and give Billy Napier a bowl game. They but almost instead, did. They were down 12-0. They almost did. But uh, Florida State, I think Jordan Travis, this is a game. Florida State, for sure, if they win 13-0 ACC champs, they're in the playoffs. Right. But it's like, can they win this game? And if they win this game, that's going to be the team everybody wants to play in the playoffs because they are not the same without Jordan Travis. Yeah, Jack Plummer for uh, Louisville, he has to protect the football. They have a chance here to just let the defense play the game and let Jack Plummer manage the game on offense. And they can win the game. They can. They have a very real chance with the way Florida State. But he cannot throw an interception. If he throws it, if he if he's mishandles the ball, throws interceptions, and you know just is somewhat careless, I, FSU's gonna find a way to win. They're that good around the around every other position that they can compensate for not having Jordan Travis at least for this game. I think Louisville gets the upset. I think. I think they you're lost crazy. Ken- I think they lost to Kentucky because they were probably. Although it was a rivalry game, they're looking forward to this. They're going to come out hard week of practice. They're going to be the FSU team that knows they're not as good without Jordan Travis. I think Louisville gets a close win, gets the upset. The only real upset, I think, of conference championship week, and that's going to throw everything into the fray in terms of who gets that fourth spot. Because you would and assume you know Oregon it's going to be in. Alabama. Well, Alabama's got to win, though. Texas oh, that's true. could get it. Uh, Oregon, Ohio State is still in it. That'd be crazy. So but Georgia, I mean, if I mean, if Georgia wins, it beats it beats Alabama. I can't see them not winning for a third time. No I mean, matter Michigan's who they good, give. Michigan's a good team. They're number two. But you can't have Harbaugh, right? No, he's. It's just the last three games. He's back this week. Oh, so he wasn't even like they were all like crying about it. He barely got even. Well, I mean, it was the biggest game of the year. Right, but they still won. Well, yeah, hindsight, twenty twenty. They're like, oh, cool, yeah, do Who whatever. Do you, have Harbaugh. you have Florida State winning this game? Yeah, I think Florida State's winning this game. So it'll be interesting to see how college football goes this week. When we talk next, we'll know who the four teams are in the playoffs. We'll know who's going to be playing for the national championship. The four teams playing for it. That's super exciting. So it'll be super exciting. Let's move on to the NFL now. We got Seahawks at Dallas Cowboys Thursday night. So we don't. We covered Thursday last week, I think, for the first time. Yeah, and being I, Thanksgiving. It was easier than I thought. It so. was easier than I thought. And honestly, looking at the slate, this is one of the best games of the week. Yeah, Six Dallas and, favored by nine. Dallas favored by nine, which is surprising in the NFL. It's a big, big spread, especially Seattle six and five, Dallas eight and three. So it's not like Seattle is a, a bullshit game. Do you want to hear a crazy stat? Seattle coming off of a bad loss too. Dak Prescott. 0-3 to Seattle in the regular season in his career. That's a, that is a strange step. He I will beat say, them, uh, 2018 wild card uh, game, he beat the Seahawks. That's the only time he's beaten the Seahawks. So he's officially 1-3, but that's still crazy because they haven't been good his whole career. In both teams, an interesting thing, Thursday night you always talk about the late, like the short notice. Right. But both teams played last Thursday too on Thanksgiving Day. So oh, yeah, they is, did. It is like a full week. It's a regular week for these guys. Um, Dallas blew out the Commanders. They right. look one of their best games of the year, like all-around good games. Yeah, they Seattle, had the defense. Dallas was working on offense, kind of got everybody in the mix. Seattle had the exact opposite game. They got dominated and blown out by the 49ers last Thursday. So it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back. Usually in the NFL, when that happens— both teams play dramatically different the next week, and you would think Seattle would come in and kind of right. beat Dallas pretty good. Now that I'm saying that, I'm a little worried. But listen. Because that might happen, but I think Dallas is the better team. I think Dallas gets to win. I think this Dallas team, I'm not saying they're winning the Super Bowl because I don't think so, but I think they're a little different than usual. They're kind of, for the first time in a while, I think just because how good the Eagles are doing and Taylor Swift and the Chiefs, Dallas is kind of flying under the radar. Nobody's, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing not being that, talked that about Baltimore as much, Ravens, which is good car. for them, right? They don't they don't need hype, and that you know what they also don't need they don't need to have to rely on their quarterback. Let the defense talk. Dallas has been absolutely <laughs> dominant at home, and I think honestly, with their one of the best defenses in the league, Seattle isn't scoring a bunch of <laughs> offensive touchdowns in the last like. Four games they've scored three Dallas scores a couple touchdowns they can win this game they can put it away I believe Dallas is gonna win 
So we both got Dallas. Let's move on to Sunday now. And we're taking on maybe the hottest team in the NFL. I think they have the longest winning streak in the Denver Broncos. It's crazy to think that Russell this, Wilson and the Denver Broncos are the hottest team in the NFL right well, now. Well, remember at the beginning of the season, they started off horrible, horribly. They went 2-1, and, and they've... No, I think they went... Uh, I think they, they went two and one, and then they lost five. four in a row. <laughs> and they let up 70 points to the Dolphins. People were talking about Sean Payton washed. Obviously, Russell Wilson washed. All of a sudden, they've turned it around. They've looked pretty good. This yeah. is a good team, and they're right in the playoff mix, and they're taking on one of the surprising teams in the NFL in the Houston Texans, going to Houston. Houston, three-and-a-half-point favorites. Both teams six and five. Both teams right in that playoff push. First uh, in passing yards per game. C.J. Yeah, Stroud. C.J. Stroud, which is so impressive for a rookie, especially considering the Panthers passed you, on I was about you. to say, how do you think that – I like Bryce Young, and I think he's going to be a good quarterback, but that's tough to see. But, the, I mean, honestly, what do you say? Like, the Panthers went for the Alabama quarterback. It kind of – you know, they got the M.O. of being great, so I, I kind of get it. Yeah, but Bryce was supposed to be different. He was, like, the first one. And you say that, but Jalen Hurts is good. Right. Uh, but, yeah, Denver last week – dominated Cleveland Browns. Obviously, the Browns without an offense because they don't have Deshaun Watson anymore. Right. But Denver dominated them. Houston, tough, tough loss. With the, I think it was a 56-yard field goal to tie it at the end. In the rain. In the, Well, it was in Houston. I don't know if it was raining. Was it? It hit the post, though. It hit oh, the I crossbar. I thought it was raining. Hit the crossbar. They were so close to sending that game to overtime. A tough loss for the Texans. How does a young team like the Texans respond after a tough loss like that? I'm not sure. But I put my faith in Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. I think the Broncos go into Houston. I think they continue their hot streak. I think the Broncos get the dub. Look, I I was going to kind of switch my thing and agree with you on this one as well. I think the Texans are going to respond well. I think... The Broncos have been they've been winning, but they haven't been great all season. They haven't had consistent playmakers. I they've, don't know. They've been pretty good. They beat the shit out of the Chiefs. They had a good win last week. It, it just hasn't been like a full force showing. I think the Texans are going to do what they need to do here. Both teams have been allowing points. So I think being, you know, the number one passing offense in the NFL, I think the Texans are going to be able to win this game. All right, so the next game, it's going to be a team coming off of a huge, big win. Big win as in they dominated the game, taking on a team that's coming off of a game that they got dominated. And surprisingly, the 7-4 and four Browns got dominated, and the 5-6 and six L.A. Rams dominated a team. Well, I mean, um, that makes sense with Watson being out for the year. That does make sense. The Rams seem to be a team, though. They're maybe starting to figure things out a little bit. They still have Matt Stafford. They still have some talent. Stafford did throw for four touchdowns last week. They're right. If you look at the NFC playoff picture, five and six is right there. Like they're a game out of the playoffs. This is a team that has still has a lot to play for against the Cleveland Browns. Although they have a seven and four record, as you said, the Sean Watson hurt. Yeah, they back, probably don't believe this, but that kind of like back surgery. That kind of he's out for the season, like. They wouldn't. Nobody from the Browns would admit this, but like, yeah, your see, like, it's your done. season's not done, but like, it's you're not done. winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's done. So not yeah. when your backups are P.J. Walker and what is Dorian his name, Thomas Robinson, right? And DTR. he's got a, he's in concussion protocol. Yeah, he's so who's even going to start protocol. this week? So I guess it's P.J. Uh, Walker. Stafford threw four touchdowns last week. Honestly, I I don't know what it is. How you can go from being a Super Bowl winning team. To just falling. I mean, your team's pretty much the same, and you just are not. No, they're just getting older. That's the NFL. I think they get the dub, though, here. I think at home against the Browns, I think the Rams get the win, go to 6-6, six and six, get some, continue their momentum. I think the Rams may be a playoff team. They could be a surprise playoffs team. I agree the Rams are going to win, but I think they need to get Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup involved way more on offense if they're going to be that flashy team to get to the playoffs again but yeah i agree the rams probably gonna win this game all right so let's move on to probably the best game of the weekend i don't know best game of the weekend probably the two best teams in the nfc it's the 10 and 1 eagles hosting the 8 and 349ers somehow at home 
10 and 1 Eagles are three point underdogs. I've said this before, and this is the hill I'm going to die on now. I looked at the injury report today. Almost everybody and everybody that matters on the 49ers roster is healthy. They're going to win this game because a healthy 49ers team can win the Super Bowl. And I believe that the brotherly shove, the tush push, whatever you want to call it, ain't going to work when you got the triple threat CMC. You got Debo who can run the ball or catch a pass. You know what IU can do. Purdy's been consistent. I agree with you. I have originally had the Eagles, but I think I picked the Bills last and then week. And then look what the Eagles did last week. Well, I mean, the Bills are a good team just playing bad. Like, when they play their, up to their par, like, they're right up there. Right. But they want, they had to win the game in overtime. The yeah, game started. the Bills are one of the most talented teams in the NFL. Right. And the 49ers the are Eagles, better. I think the Eagles are just a little, um, they're due for a loss. And it would feel good. I... I think the Eagles do for a loss. I like the 49ers. I think, as you said, when they're healthy. I originally had Philly, but I think I'm going San Francisco. Uh, I don't know how close a game. I don't, I don't know about the three-point spread, but I think the 49ers get the win. Yeah, the, the three-point spread's rough. It, I think it's not that the Eagles are bad. Obviously, they're one of the best teams in the NFL. They're probably the best team at this point. The, the thing, I think, is that they do... They they have the whole it's and if it ain't broke don't fix it mentality which is great. You bet we say that, but they've beaten like two of the best teams in the NFL the past two weeks. I think people are just starting to starting to realize how to play. If them. they go three and if they win this game, that means the last three games they beat the Chiefs, the Bills, yeah, the three and the Forty ers Right, that's super impressive. But you still got to face them all again in the playoffs potentially. I think somehow the Niners get the dub. And the last game we're going to cover for the NFL this week, I think it's the Sunday night game, the Kansas City Chiefs, 8-3, and three, the team, they're still there. No matter yep. what you say, they're still there. And they're honestly, if I had to bet money right now, I would bet them to win the Super Bowl. It's crazy that they're just always just hanging around. Going to Green Bay, taking on the 5-6 and six Packers, the Packers, one of the, also a team that's very hot in the NFL, right in the playoff picture in the NFC. Two of the most storied franchises, two of the oldest franchises in football. I, I don't even know why we're why we're ever counting out the Chiefs. Well, nope, I've never counted them out. The, but like the narrative is like they're not going to be good. It's like it's like they're eight and three. Where are you, where do you see that they're that not going to be good? good? As soon as you get Travis Kelsey involved, they're good. As soon as you let Patrick Mahomes do his, and it's like you don't think they're going to figure that out by January, like they yeah. always do. Like, come on. Let them lose a few games. They always do. Let them let them learn how the loss feels, and they're gonna come back and be like, "Yeah, we don't like that." Yeah, we're coming. Just like win. last week, it looked like they lost. Coming off of a loss, they fell down fourteen zero on the road to the Raiders. And what did they do? Thirty one seventeen. Yeah, thirty one to three run. They dominated after that. Yeah, the Chiefs are a good team. Probably the best team. Probably the favorite still to win the Super Bowl. And I think they go into Green Bay, Green Bay, and. They end this Packer momentum. They kind of put the Packers back into place. I think the Packers played very well last week. Yeah, Jordan but they Love played, played better than they actually are. Right. Jordan Love played near perfect last Chiefs week. Chiefs put them in their place. Stunning the Lions. But if you look at the back half of the game, the Lions almost came back and won that game. Exactly. When if you're the Aaron Rodgers replacement, you need to put up 38 points on the Lions to show them that you can just continue not that you're going to be caught up to and almost beaten deep into the fourth quarter. But I think the Chiefs are going to win as well. I think they're probably going to cover that six-and-a-half-point spread, but I think it's going to be a fun, interesting game. 